This hoverboard was just 20 euros off of Marketplace. In this video I will show you how to turn it into a premium 15Nm direct drive steering wheel. The whole cost will be between 1 and 200 euros and we should get uh, a truly premium feeling thanks to the 15Nm torque and the direct drive construction. This wheel was built following the open source FFBEAST project, which link you can find below. The build starts by completely tearing down the hoverboard. We need to get one motor out by unscrewing these four bolts and removing it from the chassis. We can then uh, unscrew all the bolts keeping the motor together and pull it apart to be able to remove the tire. Before putting it back together we need to modify the stator by routing the cables of the shaft. And drilling a 3mm hole in its end to be able to feed a steel rod through the shaft and transmit the motor rotation to the encoder. The motor hole sensors also need to be removed since we won't need them. We can now route the phase wires back through the shaft and move on working on the rotor. First we need to drill a 2mm hole through the center of the rotor, so that a standard 2mm bike spoke can be threaded through it, using a spoke nipple as a nut to jam it firmly in place. The last thing to do before assembling the motor back together is to drill a standard 6 bolt pattern used to mount steering wheels and mount a wheel spacer to the rotor using a few round head M6 bolts. I used the same spacer I made for my previous racing sim build since it proved to be a very secure and reliable quick release system. Once that's done, we are ready to put the motor back together, threading the spoke through the hole we made earlier. The build can continue with the help of PCB way which provided the custom PCB needed for this project and also all the necessary 3D printed parts. PCBWay is my go-to website when it comes to low-cost, high-quality on-demand manufacturing. They offer a wide range of services ranging from metal 3D printing, CNC machining, PCB making and injection molding. Turnaround times are very short and the competitive prices allow you to easily step up your project with a high quality custom parts. Check them out at the link below. The motor controller I choose to use is a, a MKS X-Drive Mini. This board comes with a brake resistor which can be soldered to the PCB. A USB-B female connector can then be soldered uh, on the other side of the board together with uh, four wires that will connect uh, this port to a USB-C male connector that will plug in the USB-C port on the controller. We can now solder the two power cables and the XT60 connector to the board before also adding the two brake resistor wires.
we can now take uh, the magnetic encoder and solder the 5 pin connector to the board, making sure to solder the black cable to ground, the yellow to Z, green to B, blue to A and the red to 5 volts. The next step is to take 4 SK16 blocks, mounting them like so. Perpendicularly to each other, with the PCB screwed in between. We can proceed assembling the encoder mounting system. For that, a 10 by 19 by 4 bearing can be pressed in the central hole of this 3D printed part. This small adapter can then be placed inside it after screwing a M3 bolt on its side and inserting the encoder magnet in the appropriate hole. The hole in the opposite side will house the spoke coming from the motor, which can be cut to a length of 18 mm from the motor shaft end. This assembly can then be mounted to the back SK16 block and clamped in place with this other 3D printed plate before inserting the motor. The other 3D printed parts can now be screwed on the PCB to form the wheelbase body and to allow to mount the controller securely in place. The upper lid is a bit too short to clear the USB-C and the screwed connectors, so some longer screws can be used. Also make sure to use very thin screws so that the plastic doesn't crack. The build is now nearly finished, we just need to slide a 10mm tube in the lower two SK16 blocks so that another couple can be slid on its end, to allow a secure and tilt adjustable mounting system. Now it's up to you to decide how you want to mount it to the table. I choose to screw it to a 10mm plywood sheet that will then be screwed directly under the underside of my desk. I used a total of 6 wood screws and some washers to make the strongest connection possible. After mounting it we need to sort the power supply. For that I used a 24 volts 10 amperes unit mounted beside the wheelbase. Before mounting it I soldered a XT60 male connector to a wire harness that will connect the PSU to the wheelbase. I traced the power supply mounting holes to a piece of paper and then I used it as a template to correctly drill the four holes needed to mount it under the desk. After that's done we just need to connect the power and the signal cable and we can proceed uploading the firmware to the board. I will not explain in details how it's done since there is a very very detailed step by step guide on the FFBEAST website. Just note that my board got stuck in a state where it wouldn't be recognized by the PC. I just had to power it on while pressing the boot button clear its memory in the STCube programmer and just uh, upload the firmware afterwards. 
Fortunately, other than uh, the small hiccup, the wheel worked wonders. It was easy to set up and it feels uh, truly amazing, blowing out of the water my last build under any aspect. It is more precise, way smoother, has less friction and uh, it also feels uh, way more robust. It is also extremely cheaper at around 100 euros, depending on the parts you buy, and it's uh, better in any way than uh, most uh, entry-level non-direct drive steering wheels available on the market. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss uh, any of my future builds, and also consider giving the Dad's Projects uh, Instagram page a follow to remain updated on my future videos and projects. I'll see you soon!